<clears throat> Damn. <clears throat> My voice might be going out, but hey, man. Fuck going on, YouTube, man. Y'all know who it is, man. It's your boy, Big One, man. We back in the cut with another video for y'all. So, look, check this out, man. First of all, I want to say thank y'all for 3,000 subscribers, man. You know what I'm saying? Thank y'all and thank God. Um, there was our goal to finish the year. We already hit it. So, now, hey, we ain't stopping the road to 5K, man. Let's see if we can hit 5K before 2023, man. We already hit our goal for 2022. But let's see if we can push it even farther and hit 5K. We hit 3K. So let's go and push it to five, man. Roll with the 5K. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and smash the subscribe button. Click that bell to be notified when I upload a video. Hey, also, man, make sure that y'all please smash that like button and comment. You know what I'm saying? Because if you watch the video and subscribe, but, like, don't leave a like or comment, YouTube be tripping sometimes, man. Like, I don't know. I don't know what they be got going on. But, you know what I'm saying? We're trying to build up our uh, algorithm, have you said. We're trying to get out there. But look. I got some videos for y'all, man. Like I said, I ain't gonna tell y'all what order they in because I don't know what order they gonna be in. But the first video that we finna react to, man, is the final hours of Bibi. Uh, if y'all don't know who Bibi, I don't even know too much about Bibi. Uh, I just know I think they say he was a 16 year old kid. Um, he's one of Fulio uh, brothers, partners, homeboys, something like that. They ended up getting, uh, you know, he lost his life at a young age. So we finna check out the video to the final hours of Bibi, man, and uh. Yeah, let's see. Let's see what went down. You know what I'm saying? What took place and everything like that. Let's check it out. And gunfire erupts inside a northwest side of apartment complex. It leaves this 16-year-old. Neighbors say the shooting sounded like a war zone. 60 to 70 rounds had to be dropped in, uh, in the course of maybe 15 seconds. It sounded like it was Iraq out here, like multiple guns, like from different guns. It was real, it was real. It was real scary. I was in my apartment. I heard it all the way from in my apartment. Oh, most definitely. Sound just like a, probably an AK-47 or something that yeah. would, you know, shoot repeatedly without stopping. I can tell you the moment that we drove up here, we knew this was a very bad scene, a very grim scene. And the second we got up here, we could hear loved ones of the victims, and you can hear them right now off in the distance. I don't know. I see like, my life stuff. With my baby dad, my life stuff. I don't feel alive anymore. Like it was real. It was February 25th, 2019. A family's life was about to be drastically changed by events that would occur that day. Unexpecting to them, their son, Adrian Gaynor Jr., was about to become another statistic. I ain't gonna lie, like, I'm not even being funny or none of that because I don't joke around with depth and shit. Like, this has always been lame to me. Uh, <clears throat> he comes to like Young and Ace a little bit, though. Like, he could have been Young and Ace's little brother or something. Like, and that's on some real shit that's not even joking. In the deadly gang feud between rapper Julio Fulio's alleged gang, KTA, Kill Them All, and Young and Ace's alleged gang, ATK, Ace to Kill, Aim to Kill, that has been played. So, Aim to Kill, Kill Them All. Hmm. The streets of Jacksonville, Florida, Adrian Gaynor Jr., was commonly known by the alias. Look, and he kind of looked like um, Young and A's little brother that that died. Uh, what was his name? Quan Quan, I believe. Let me see if I can pull it up real quick. Bro, I know I'm not tripping, bro. I swear he looked just like him. Hold on, let me try to hear y'all. So it won't be too long, but I'm, I'm, bro. Hold on, something ain't right. They might want to do some. Uh, Look, here we go. Mm. 
Man, hell yeah, look. Y'all can't say he don't. Y'all can't say they don't look alike, bruh. Man, they like they could have been twins, dog. That shit is crazy. Look at the picture right here. And then look at the video on the screen right here. Y'all can't tell me that on favor, man. Comment down below if you think so. Man, that shit crazy. Bibby Osama, a.k.a. Bibby. By age, he was just still a child at 16 years. Not yet even experiencing the fullness of life. But he held ties to a legend KTA gang affiliate, Charles Jones, also known as Julio Fulio. And that placed his life in danger. Before his final moments... Here's one thing you need to do before you start your holiday shopping. Don't spend another dime on Amazon until you watch this first. Moments would come where assailants preyed on his life. Bibby was warned about the upcoming jeopardy his life was in by loved ones close to him. One week prior to his demise, his close friend, Therese Powell, known as the rapper K Shorty, tried to talk him out of being in the company of Julio Fulio for his own safety. Around February 18th, 2019, a week before Bibby was targeted, K Shorty called him from behind prison walls as he was locked up at the time. His words were, I see you out here with Fulio, but don't get caught up in that. You know how bad they want him and they'll get anybody just to hurt him. That's real shit, bro. That's real shit. Let dude should listen on everything because if, <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? Damn, that's crazy. A week before he died, he called, I called him on the jail phone. And I said, I said, I, I see you out there. Can you turn? I see you with uh, Fulio. You know what I'm mean? I'm like, but don't get caught up in that, bro. I'm like, you know how bad they want him? They'll get anybody just to hurt him. Bibby would brush it off, saying he's not in deep into that lifestyle. Just enjoying the music and concerts, so there's no need to worry. K Shorty, knowing how dangerous the situation was getting between the two gangs, again tried to persuade Bibby to keep his distance, telling him, they know who you is now. Even if you ain't dissing, you around them, so you're part of it. On that thing, uh, what's called to say the best? Shout out to that nigga. What's his name? Uh, Sleazy World. He said, uh, what song was it? When he said, uh, even you they family, you ain't in it. I mean, even though you ain't in it, you they family, so you get caught, you gonna get it too. On that thing, like, when you real deal in that heat with niggas, bro, I gotta go get my new glasses, bro. This shit finna blow me. <laughs> when you in that field, he with a nigga, man, niggas gonna be giving a fuck about, you feel me? Like, nah. She like, but you done got in the trailer, they know who you is now. I mean, like, even if you ain't this and you around them, so you're a part of it. And that's how, that's how he end up happening to him. That would be the last conversation he had with his friend, Bibby. The morning of February 25th, Bibby went to school as he would on any regular day. Ironically, he attended the same school where Julio Fulio was shot as a teen. Grand Park High School. And guess what school he was going to? Grand Park, the same school I got shot getting out there. He was going to the same school. Bibby would come home from school like always to hang out and do what friends normally would in an urban environment, like where Julio was at his grandmother's house. Estimated time between 2 and 3 p.m., given the account of what happened by Julio Fulio, who considered Bibby as a brother. He was like, this lie, that's my little twin. Like, you know, I got him tattooed on my face. That's my little bro, little okay. One day, I was at my godmama house in the hood where we from, 45. And every day after school, he'll come to me, like, he coming straight to me, we chopping up, we smoking, like, you know? On this day, Bibby broke routine. He checked in with Fulio, but this time, instead of staying put at Fulio's grandmother's residence, he decided to head to where it was known as Hilltop. I'm like, the bro, it's hot outside, like the police. You know, I ain't even think about no, like, niggas. Like, I ain't even talking about like, the police out, the bro. Like, 
don't walk nowhere, bro. Sit here with me until it's time for you to go wherever you need to go, you know what I'm saying? Wait till the sun go down or something. Baby, however, was accustomed to being comfortable, as he would say, in the hood. But that same comfort and not heeding Fulio's word that day would end his life minutes later. The last time Fulio would see Bibby was when he told him the words, I love you, bro. Be safe. Bibby headed out and made his way to Hilltop. The time was approximately 2.30 p.m. Bibby was in the Hilltop Village apartment complex parking lot on West 45th Street, where according to news reporters, he went to visit a friend. The suspects in mask, who were on his trail, caught him off guard. And according to eyewitness accounts, they chased him to the back of the parking lot, where he was confirmed shot at least once. Uh, eyewitnesses are telling us now that Gaynor uh, was being chased to this exact spot where he lost his life. Just before 3 p.m., 911 calls would come in, stating there was what sounded like a war zone in the parking lot of the apartment complex. It sounded like it was all right out here, like multiple guns, like from different guns. Uh, just like a, probably an AK-47 or something that would, you know, shoot repeatedly without stopping. When officers showed up, Shit. they found Bibby lying in a pool of blood, passed away. Julio Fulio would find himself burdened with hurt upon receiving calls of the tragedy that just occurred. My big brother called me. Jit, where you at? They said you dead in here talking. I'm like, hell no. I go on Facebook. A little boy just got killed in here talking. Like 16, so I'm like, they're like, yeah, he had on a uniform, or a gray, a gray sweater. Burgundy shirt. Oh, God. Like, I just hang up the phone. One of my own um, God brothers walking out. She's like, bro, they said, baby, dead, bro. Meanwhile, his family was sent into a state of shock and trauma. His mother stated the chilling words. When her baby died, her life stopped. She doesn't feel alive anymore. I don't know. I feel that my life stopped. When my baby died, my life stopped. I don't feel alive anymore. This is the sad reality of the gang lifestyle and culture of retaliations that leave many youths like Adrian Gaynor Jr., a.k.a. Bibby, lying in the grave before they even have a chance to live. In a twist of gruesome and unremorseful events, opposing gang members that wanted to taunt Fulio flooded online, making a mockery of the team's passing. One such individual in particular... This is Chris. Chris charged $100 per haircut. He doesn't add anything else into that haircut. Service really just... <coughs> this is another thing too, real quick. I mean, this is one thing I hate about social media and how they try to justify um, giving people time. Like I said, I ain't know nobody's side because there's Florida shit. I ain't got nothing to do with that. I don't know... No nigga from ATK personal or KTA personal, but I mean, just cause okay, so you know what I'm saying? He did make a lot of this joking and speaking on this shit, but they don't mean the nigga like actually killed him. Like, you feel me? Like, it could have been somebody that was probably tied in with them, but they blaming this nigga cause you know, I mean, all he did was like joked about it type of shit, but yeah, I mean, Shaq gets his eye go though. I don't know. It was Hakeem Robinson known as the rapper Queso, who was allegedly affiliated to ATK. Queso was ruthless, flashing guns, posting playful clips laughing at Bibby's homicide, rapping about his demise, and even laughing at Bibby's mother, marching for justice for her son. It was a cold-blooded act, but it's telling of the mentality of the toxic lifestyle. Bibby's mother went on to speak of the horrors that they endured after those allegedly responsible for ending her son's life would spit and urinate on his grave and mock them every chance they had. Queso went as far as putting Bibby's image on a music project's cover along with other opposing gang affiliates they allegedly murdered and posted it online to promote his project disrespectfully titled Bibby Out. Cops would be hot on the trail, trying to piece together the suspects in Bibby's homicide, and the evidence led their path straight to Queso about two years after the crime. 
At the time, Queso was already behind bars along with his father and brother, facing a charge for the hit on another individual, which was rumored to be retaliation for his other brother's tragic demise. Crime appeared to be a family affair. He is also charged with second-degree murder in the 2020 death of Charles McCormick, a.k.a. rapper Little Buck. His father, Abdul Robinson Sr., and his brother, Abdul Robinson Jr., are also arrested in connection to the crime. JSO says the Robinsons are linked to the group ATK. Queso nearly became free to walk the streets again, and he was on the verge of bonding out for his attempted hit case when he was charged with first-degree murder in the homicide of 16-year-old Adrian Gaynor Jr., a.k.a. Bibby. This is where the chilling details about Bibby's final moments came out when a witness report on police documents was made public. According to the eyewitness accounts, Queso and his affiliate named Whitaker drove to Hilltop from one side to another and parked for approximately 20 minutes at one spot before Bibby and another person, Pratt, was spotted under a gazebo. Robinson, a.k.a. Queso, and his affiliate exited the vehicle carrying firearms. His affiliate had a long AR-style rifle, and Queso had an AR pistol. His affiliate, Whitaker, ran after Pratt, and Queso chased Bibby, firing as he ran. The witness went on to state that Bibby then fell to the ground and covered his head with his hands. Queso then ran up close range and shot Bibby in the back of the head or neck as Bibby continued to try and shield for his life. Both Queso and Whitaker is said to have returned to their vehicle, a gray or silver Nissan Maxima, and left. With these first-hand accounts from witnesses and surveillance footage along with photographs and videos of Queso bragging online about the homicide... Are you had to leave? Why you ain't stay with me? With me? Why you had to leave? Baby. Investigators had all they need to try him for first degree hit. Footage would surface online of officers breaking the news about him being investigated for the murder of Bibby and the reality of what he was facing finally weighed on him. Queso was in the room in disbelief and denial of what was happening, but it was indeed happening. Before the footage ends, his words were, everybody pray for me. You know what that is? You know who that is? Did it ring a bell to you? The same one who allegedly pulled the trigger was asking for saving grace. But that's life. No matter who you are, when it comes to life behind the prison cell, Oftentimes, God is the one turned to, forgetting that in the moment of taking another's life, God was left out of the equation. Baby's mother never stopped fighting for justice. She was out in the rain rallying, and finally, it looks like some justice will be served and closure can come for Baby's family. I just want justice for my child. I'm going to walk this city until they get justice for my baby. Queso is currently still behind bars, facing the consequences of his actions and going through the legal court process of his case. Hopefully after due course, the ones responsible are held accountable. On the outside, the back and forth still continues and Bibby's name continues to be disrespected in songs like ATK alleged member Young and Aces, Who I Smoke. Hold up. The song samples one of the most iconic classics, Vanessa Carlton's A Thousand Miles. It sparked a brief backlash online, but she stood by her approval of clearing the sample for use, arguing if the race was reversed, it would be no problem with the street lifestyle expressed within art. The cycle of bloodshed and pain continues. Maybe one day, the senseless killing will come to an end, and you can know what it means to live a full life. R.I.P. Adrian Gaynor Jr., a.k.a. Bibby. There's some crazy, 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 crazy ass shit, man. Damn, so yeah, little dude was number 16. 
And so, <clears throat> according to the video, from the video, it sounds like he just saying that we don't even know. Well, no, we don't even know 100% sure if, uh, K I guess the case was still going through trial and shit. I don't know. I had to look up on the case on it, but that shit is crazy, man. You know what I'm saying? Young fella lost his life at a young age. But that's why y'all little dudes need to pay attention, man. Quit trying to listen to these rappers and think they really living like that when they not. You know what I'm saying? Just for instance, a rapper just got be talking so much gangster stuff on his soul, then got smacked by a handicapped man in the airport. You feel me? I'm, I ain't, I, I'm just being honest. Like, y'all be wanting to be street so bad when half of these niggas y'all looking up to not street, bro. Let me tell you what's gangster. Get your mama out the hood. If you live in the hood, your mama live in the hood, whatever. Y'all living situations ain't 100% good. That's gangster, my nigga. Move your family out the hood and, and, and get some money, bro. Because being in the streets, bro, for one, the streets so washed up. You got to watch for rats. Including your family, you gotta watch for getting back dough. Including your family, I watch for all that shit, man. Like, bro, yeah, like go pick y'all up a trade or something, or get on this social media shit. You feel me? Make your money and cool out, man. Ain't shit. And just protect yourself at all times. You know what I'm saying? And if it pop off, it pop off. But don't be out here. You feel me? Portraying an image that you know you really ain't living. Type shit type shit but y'all coming down below let me know what y'all think man um yeah let me know what y'all think about this one man you know what i'm saying and make sure y'all hit me up on my instagram sending me videos that y'all want to see me do see me prank ideas and little shit like that too um i i i've been telling y'all 2023 but it's, it's gonna be real beautiful real sweet real fun you know what i'm saying we're going on a lot of adventures we're doing a lot of things man so make sure y'all tap in make sure you smash that subscribe button click that bell to be notified when i'm uploading a video follow me on all my social media man make sure y'all follow my detailing channel make sure y'all following the soul lit family channel we gonna have a lot of family videos coming um over time you know what i'm saying and then we grinding man it's big one wrote the 5k i'll see y'all in the next video peace